Well, it was just two months ago that millions of Texans lost power during that February winter storm. Everyone wants to know why. Could a simple paperwork error have resulted in millions of homes without heat and lights? Investigative reporter Tanya Iser from our sister station WFAA went to the oil and gas fields of West Texas to find answers. When the winter storms hit Midland, home of the Permian Basin, the epicenter of oil and natural gas production, Joe Brosick of Double Eagle Energy says his company tried to do what it could to get its wells ready to keep running in the freezing cold. And we started preparing all our stuff to be as winterized as possible, which in Texas is a little bit difficult because we're not set up for sub-zero temperatures. But just like much of Texas, oil and gas wells had their power turned off to help keep the electric grid from collapsing. That included every one of Double Eagle's 650 wells. This is our whole business is making oil and gas. And so when we go from you know producing 650 wells a day to zero, that's uh, obviously a huge hit for our business and, and uh, not good for the entire state. It also matters a lot in North Texas because when wells freeze, it means less electricity is available for us. Natural gas is the primary fuel used by many power plants to make electricity. When there's no natural gas, power plants can't run. And when they don't run, there's no electricity to keep well pumps working and the gas flowing. This is basically a, a, a big computer that's operating this pumping unit, uh, but it all needs electricity to run. Without this? Without the very first piece, if there's no power coming into the control panel, then this thing doesn't operate. It obviously takes power to run, and, and electricity, once you lose it, we're dead in the water. Power plants fueled by natural gas generate about 47% of the electricity on the grid run by the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT. It's all connected. We lose power at our well sites so that we can't produce natural gas that needs to go to the gas power plants and they can't run because they don't have the gas from our wells. Texas lawmakers and regulators were warned after the 2011 winter storm about the interdependency of electricity and natural gas and what can happen if they're not in sync. My hope is, is that we don't have a, you know, a replay of what happened in 2011. Joshua Rhodes is an energy expert at UT in Austin. We saw these vulnerabilities, we saw these issues, we wrote some reports, and then they sat on the shelf and really apparently had no impact. I mean, I think Texans deserve better than that. My name is Christy Craddock. Christy Craddock chairs the Texas Railroad Commission. The agency regulates the oil and natural gas industry. The entire system is, is connected from where, wherever you start to wherever you end, right? And so you, you can blame one piece or blame another, but there is a food chain that is a circular food, food chain, so to speak. But here's where a two-page form could have kept the lights on. Craddock told lawmakers she didn't even know about it. The form puts facilities that directly provide natural gas to power plants on the critical infrastructure list, which means don't turn the power off to those on the list. When ERCOT said power had to be cut, it was Encore's job to start turning off parts of the grid because Encore actually owns the power lines and distribution of electricity for about half the state, including Midland. The company's CEO told lawmakers it listed only 35 natural gas facilities as critical infrastructure before the February storm. During the event, we added 168 new gas critical facilities. We turned them all on immediately and we kept them on the entire time. Whose responsibility that is to yes, sir. keep the list or prioritize which is more important? Those people have to tell me what's what is critical so I can keep it on. Which gets us back to the Railroad Commission. Rhodes faults them for not taking the lead after 2011 and making sure the two-page form was a priority. You know, they're the regulators supposed to regulate the industry. Um, and, you know, making sure that critical infrastructure has the power it needs to perform during these times seems like it would be part of the regulation of that industry. Mike Bonchback is an oil and natural gas consultant. He says regulators and electric providers will need to carefully decide what counts as critical infrastructure. This has to be predetermined so that there is no 
you know, somebody can't make a call to their representative and make sure that uh, their lights are on them and somebody else is not. You know, we don't want any playing favorites business. The oil from the water. Rosick told us his company is filling out the forms for about 200 of the company's highest producing wells. Because we could have kept producing if we didn't lose power. That's That was a big problem. We could have... We could have figured out a way to work through the cold if we didn't, if we'd have had power. But we, once we lost power, then um, all of our preparation kind of went out the window because we couldn't keep our fluids moving anymore. And keep in mind, another piece of accountability connected to the Railroad Commission. They largely don't require oil and gas companies to make sure their facilities can withstand extreme cold or heat. The commission has long resisted calls to make weatherization mandatory. The oil fields simply cannot run without power making electricity the best winterization tool. A federal report on this year's winter storm pointed to extreme cold as a problem. It says the decline in natural gas production was mostly a result of freeze-offs. That's when water and other fluids freeze, blocking the flow of natural gas. Rhodes also noted before the widespread electricity outages, natural gas production had already begun to fall as the temperatures dropped. He doesn't think natural gas producers did enough to prepare for the extreme cold. If half of our power plants are going to burn natural gas, I mean, we need to make sure that we have the natural gas, you know, available to us. Dozens of bills attempting to make fixes are winding their way through the legislature. One key bill would require the natural gas supply chain to be mapped. If passed, it'll require the commission to adopt rules requiring weatherization. But will it all be enough to keep the lights on next time? In Midland, I'm Tanya Iser.